Music fades out. Welcome, welcome to one of the last sessions of today. How's everyone's day one of, we're, there we go. Now I like this, Word Camp Asia 2024. Fantastic. It is my great privilege and honor to introduce the executive director of the WordPress project and a friend, I think she thinks uh, we're friends, uh, Josefa Hayden Chimposi. Thank you so much. Come on out, Josefa. I find it, guys. Here we go. All right. Hey, everybody. Did you all know that today is International Women's Day? I think it's only fitting that we have me then ending this whole uh, day. And I thank you all for being here. There are plenty of places you could have been. You could have been hanging out with all the sponsors because those sponsor halls are very exciting. But as Robert said, my name is Josefa Hayden Champosi, and I am the executive director of the WordPress Project. I was first introduced to WordPress back in 2010 or 2011 by my mother, uh, which is a thing that people often find confusing. They're like, no, you must have introduced your mother to it. But no, I didn't. Uh, she had a spare ticket to a WordCamp, which it turns out is a very standard origin story for people who do things with WordPress. Somebody at some point was like, I've got a spare ticket to this thing. And they're like, well, I will take it. Um, and so when I left the event that weekend, all I could think about was how strange it was that someone had made this software available for free. Having been one of those people, one of those someones now for a few years, um, I think a lot about how we create open source projects and how open source projects need to have things in order to thrive um, and survive. There are things we always hear when we talk about like how to make sure open source projects s survive into the future and exist now and make sure that they're sustained and maintained. We hear things like the commons and we hear about proprietary competitors and how everything works at scale or it doesn't. And we also hear sometimes about gardens um, and specifically walled gardens. So that's kind of what we're talking about today. We're talking about walled gardens versus community gardens. We're just going to take a tour of a couple of gardens of technology. Um, and then we'll take a look at what that might mean for pro the WordPress project in the future. But don't worry, you don't actually have to know anything about gardening or horticulture or botany. I'm not going to have a quiz at the end. But you do kind of need to know what a literal walled garden might be and a literal community garden is. So a walled garden is exactly what it sounds like. It's a garden with a wall around it. Uh, you can get into it if you pay or you're invited, but if you're not in there, you can't experience it. You have to be inside the walls to experience that. And in community, community gardens in the US are these big plots of land often owned and operated by communities, and they have smaller pieces of land in them where if you live in the community, you can come and plant a garden in it. If there is a surplus of anything that you put in those gardens, sometimes it is gathered and donated to a food bank in your community, but also sometimes it's sold to other members of the community that might need or want it. And those proceeds are used to make sure that they can maintain the grounds and also, you know, do administrative work. The very, very fun work of office management. Uh, so it's one of those things that is collectively managed, but so that it has individual benefits. So those are the two things that we're talking about. Those are the literal definitions of those gardens. But we're going to talk about them as an extended metaphor for technology. So what is a walled garden in technology? I'm going to do the thing that all WordPressers love to see. How many of you have heard of walled gardens from a technology standpoint? Oh, good. If, if everybody is confused at the end of it, see who raised their hands and ask them for, for answers afterward. So a walled garden has come to refer to proprietary software uh, in technology. But the first usage was surprisingly about telephones. So there was a telephone company in the US that was making proprietary hardware for their services. Uh, and so you, you would have a phone, you would have a phone number, and it was attached to a specific address. You, if you lived there, you could rent the phone and rent the phone number, and so you were paying for both access and the service. 
And if you ever moved away, if you ever left that place, you couldn't take the number with you. You had to find a new number, lease a new phone, and start the whole process over again. So later the term was used actually in relation to marketing. That's where we most often hear it, and it refers to platforms where everything is inside. The audience is inside, the service is inside, the content is inside. And the two that people probably the, know the most right now are you know, Facebook and and Twitter, <laughs> or, or X, if that's what you're calling it. There are others also, but those are the most common use cases of that today. Market, not marketplaces, uh, marketing tools that we see as social media. There are pros and cons to this, like most things in life, but today we're gonna take a look at three things in particular. We're gonna take a look at uh, audience and then time to launch, so like going from not having a on online presence to being online, and then also ownership. So audiences in walled gardens. Um, the key element of a walled garden is that the audience is already there. So like if you're in Facebook or you go to Twitter or whatever, the audience is completely contained. They already have flagged what interests them. And really all you have to do is provide things that they might find interesting. And essentially you get paired. It's more complicated than that. And I know you all know that already. Um, and when you're starting a new business, like you've been there, many of you are probably entrepreneurs, and I understand it. You have this great idea, and you know that you could sell it if you just got it in front of the right group of people. And so it's very appealing, the idea of going directly to a, ne a network that already has the audience, putting in your information, and then carrying on from there. Because you're trying to focus on your business, right? You're trying to get something sold or make sure that everybody knows what your services are. And so I can see the desire to be able to focus on that. The other part is time to launch. So, so creating your space. Um, your space in a walled garden is almost always gonna be a super quick start. You don't have a lot of options. It's just kind of a yes, no. And they ask the basic questions that you always have, like what is your website? What is the name of your company? What is your other social handle? Whatever it is. Things that you already have decided in the process of getting your business running. And so basically, the only distance between getting started with launching on that and having it launched is how quickly your Wi-Fi can respond. And I understand the appeal of that too. In the first 30 days of your business, you want to make sure people know how to contact you so they can buy your stuff, so that you can tell them what your services are. And you know that the decor, the visual aspects are key, but you probably find them negotiable in a way that the direct line between a consumer and you absolutely isn't. And then the final thing that we take a look at is the brand. Uh, so your brand anywhere is made up a lot of uh, made up of a lot of different pieces. It's going to be your content creation, your visual design, your uh, plans that you have put together, and sometimes taglines, and all the way down to the way that you ask people to contact you. Uh, even when you can add all of that information into those platforms, it's not always the case that you can get it in front of the people that you want to be there. Sometimes those platforms are using recommendation forward algorithms or they employ intermittent reward methodologies. And so just because you're offering your brand doesn't always mean that the people that need to see it are going to see it. And so now we're gonna con contrast that with community gardens. In our case, since community gardens are standing in as a giant metaphor for open source, we're just gonna talk about WordPress when we do that. Um, I tried really hard to find a gardening metaphor that was about gardens. Um, and most of the time, like 100% of the time, people talk about public parks or fields of sheep. And I just didn't feel like that worked for us because I know that when I was learning WordPress, and certainly most of you, you get in there and you have a goal. You're trying to do something, right? You're not actually going to go to a park and sit down and look at it. That's like going into your dashboard and just looking at your dashboard. Like you're trying to sell things or create a family wiki or tell people how to knit better. I actually don't know what everybody's interests are here, so I'm going to assume knitting is one. Um, but you're trying to accomplish things. So a community garden is free and open source software where free means um, without copyright constraints or something called copyleft. And open source means no usage constraints. 
you can study, change, and reuse the software to uh, improve its functionality. And of course, there are a lot of them. Apart from WordPress, and I'm sure you've heard it by now, it powers like over 40% of the web. There's a whole bunch. Uh, apart from WordPress, there are other really well-known open source projects, things like Linux, PHP, basically anything that's in WordPress, and a bunch of the things that WordPress works with. And so if we're looking at the, three, at the same three things that we looked at for our proprietary systems, for our walled gardens, your audience in a community garden, uh, unlike in walled gardens, they're going to be off-platform. So you still have to declare the key interests, and you still have to put your content out, you still have to say what the opportunities are, but you have to appeal to those from a different place. You have to go and find them where they are and bring them to you. And before I came to, mark to uh, WordPress, I actually worked in marketing, and I was on the data analysis and strategy side. It was so interesting to see kind of just like a bunch of peaks and valleys of what the traffic was doing on the website. But ultimately, the thing that I found so interesting was the opportunity to take a bunch of activity that you saw on a website, figure out what was helping or hurting those visitors from accomplishing their goals and making changes so that they could also accomplish their goals. Because, and this isn't like a big secret, but just in case you hadn't heard it yet, most of the time, the goals of the people that are visiting your site are really close to your goals. They're there because they want your services. And so if they can accomplish that, then you can accomplish yours. And then the final thing is the spaces in the community. Remember that this is about how you work with technology and the time that we're taking to create a digital asset, like it's the, it's the time to launch part, we all know it. There are a lot of options for how you get anything done in open source, but you're able to look at all of the bits and pieces, the things that you want to change and you have some granular control over. It's not as quick start as getting something up in Facebook or Twitter, but um, it's all the same sorts of information. It's your contact uh, information, social handles, but you can also decide like if a gallery makes your products look worse or makes it look the best, you get to make those choices. And you get to make the choices about usability and accessibility for your customers, for your visitors. Change any theme that you want uh, until you get to a brand that works for you. And don't be overwhelmed by it. Do we have anyone who doesn't have a site yet? Any, everybody's already got their WordPress site up? Beautiful, look at you. Everybody knows how to do this. Okay, so I will tell this for everybody in the camera who's watching this later. If all of that felt overwhelming, it's fine. <laughs> um, you don't have to do any of that. If you want to go from zero to a thousand, you can, if you are an incredibly fearless person. But if you're not fearless and you want some help, basically every host that has the opportunity to host a WordPress website has a bunch of tools that will help you get it done. And folks, if your friends are here and they're not in this area and don't have a site yet and they found it all terrifying, go talk to some sponsors. Basically every host down there has a tool that helps you launch your site faster. And the third thing that we're looking at, of course, is our brand. Fortunately, brand elements are the same no matter where you go. It's gonna be what it looks like and what you're saying and what you're doing. A well-built brand has that enticing expression of itself and communicates its purpose and does it all with a consistent voice. And when you're building that using an open source platform like WordPress, you have all of the control over not only how it looks outside, but how it works inside. And so, walled gardens versus community gardens. Are you kind of with me so far that software can be gardens? Yeah, I heard two yeses, that's plenty. That's as many as I want. So <laughs> in that case, I'm going to invite you all to ask this question with me. What would it take to move someone out of a walled garden into a community garden? What would it take to move someone out of a proprietary software and into a com an, uh, an open source software like WordPress? This one comes down to kind of a question of human nature. Uh, our brains are wired to look for what is different. It's a basic coping mechanism. It makes sure that we are safe. Our brains want us to be safe and well. Uh, and so it's very easy to draw lines and define our differences. But 
we have more in common than we realize. And when you're trying to convince someone to switch to WordPress, uh, it makes sense to highlight what is the same so that you take some of the fear out of that change. And the similarities between the two things are actually what make the differences so critical. The work that will make any difference to the success of a project in the long run starts at the beginning, and all of that beginning tactical work is essentially the same. So we're going to take a look at the same three things we looked at before, kind of audience, time to launch, and ownership. No matter your solution, whether it's WordPress or anything else, you still have to craft your presence, find and engage with your audience, and develop your voice, and also your cadence. No matter your solution, you still have to take your vision from your mind and build it online. You have to figure out the tools, the design suite, and the moderation options. And no matter your solution, you deserve the opportunity to showcase your brilliance, to own your content and data, and to claim a space online that can be unique and clever as you are. The web is free and open, but it takes a lot of work for something like this to remain open. WordPress, as I mentioned, is one of the largest CMSs and therefore probably one of the largest open source projects. Um, and that means that there's plenty to do. So let's take a look at how the future of the community kind of shapes the future of our project. So um, WordPress turned 20 last year. And if that's news to you today, then congratulations. I welcome you to the WordPress project. Welcome new WordPresser, we all love you. Um, but being this established means that we actually have a lot of long-standing philosophies and beliefs that guide all of our decisions. Things like the four freedoms of open source and the five good faith rules of community, but also big picture thoughts like human-centric open source methods at scale and prioritizing decisions over options. We also have a long-standing commitment to backwards compatibility and constant, constant effort to create lower barrier opportunities to education as well as access to networks and equitable experiences in business and in WordPress. As a caveat, all of these things are documented for WordPress but a little hard to find right now and I think that we need to put them all in one spot so everybody can see it. That's for some contributors somewhere. Uh, so it's these core values, among others, that keep our ecosystem thriving. Some of us are contributing to pay forward the opportunity that we found here. And some of us are not yet contributing because we are still finding that opportunity that is, that is available to us today. But no matter what brings you to WordPress, just being here uh, is a t being part of a tide that lifts all boats. You're part of this ecosystem that strives to enable long-term success of our software and our local community, and of our businesses and our best selves. We care for what grounds us, not because we are stuck in the past, but because we believe in what brought us here. And speaking of being 20 years old, have you all noticed how much bigger we are now? Do we have long-term contributors in here? Yeah. One of you, three of you, I see you, you didn't clap, but I see you back there. <laughs> so you all know, right? We, we have watched this over the years. We went from one team to two teams. That was core and then community. And then we had 12 teams and now we have like 25 or something. <laughs> There's so many of them. We have more committers than you can shake a stick at, I feel. And more community managers and organizers than I will ever have breath to thank. We have so many projects and working groups that it takes a mid-sized team of people just to keep track of most of it. And it makes you wonder, knowing how much we have changed, knowing how much bigger we are, are the things that we're doing still what they're supposed to be doing? Are they still serving the same purpose for us as they were 15 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago? And if we were to prune an item or two, how much more could we grow in areas that our users say they really need from us? And for everyone who does not know what I mean when I'm talking about contributions, for all of the folks who are users of WordPress, if you're not yet aware of the community, you can get a sense for how big we are by obviously the numbers. They come up in state of the word every year, but also by the sheer number of things that you can do in WordPress and with WordPress. It is 
mind-boggling to think how much this software has grown from being a simple blogging tool to being a full-blown framework that can support massive applications like Gutenberg or large white paper um, uh, websites, networks of sites for organizations like NASA, and also still support local coffee roasters point of sale system. And those contributors that I keep mentioning, they do what they can to help manage what might be an early distraction for you. They create themes so that you don't have to know good design in order to have good design. They build plugins so that you don't have to understand the functionality in order to have a site that functions. They find and patch security vulner vulnerabilities. They update PHP and Node versions. They triage and fix bugs that you have told us are existing, that are broken. They translate this software into 200 different languages so that all you have to do is manage your audience, your space, and your brand. Because that's plenty, if we're honest about it. When you're getting started with something like this, that is more than enough to focus on. And ultimately, we have to see what is emerging around us so that we can support and invest in the things that will help us in the future. I mentioned at the start, I'm the executive director of this project, and in a few places I've mentioned that it takes a lot of people to get this work done. And it is those people that are showing up to organize word camps and to make contributor days happen and to build new tools like the translation uh, self-serve tool that we used at contributor day that help us to make sure that we are moving fast enough to be relevant because new technology is available every day, but also slow enough to be ethical because what we do today builds the foundations of what we can do tomorrow. So when we see things like the WP Playground or way back in the day, the organizer tools that we built for WordCamp organizers, we can see how spending time in those early days of a project can really help us to grow and take advantage of opportunities that we didn't really see for ourselves. But if you're not wandering around hacking in core, which I know we don't hack in core anymore, but you feed the ecosystem, you feed the WordPress project in a different way. The WordPress project isn't part of the data economy, um, but we do have our own alternative economies that are based on an exchange of time, knowledge, and use. So if you see a plugin that is the best version of functionality that you always needed, or a design that's just in beauty and flexibility, or like if you came to a WordCamp and it's the best conference you've been to all year, Thank you, thank you. Uh, support it through your time and your money or the use of the product or like a good old fashioned little tweet. Shoop. I thought I did a great job of that sound. Oh, it's a text message sound. Forget it, nobody remember. So we vote with our feet and our time and our patronage and we don't pretend that we know how to make the sound of tweets going out the door. So let's recap this really quickly and then we'll open it up for some questions. When you are looking at how to convince people to get out of a prop proprietary system and into an open source system, highlight the similarities between the two things so that the transition sounds a little less scary. And then use the differences to highlight the long-term value. Know the foundations of what we are doing here because it's our roots and the health of our ecosystem that make us strong. Manage the distractions because we all have a finite amount of time and energy. And feed new growth, feed interesting projects because we cannot predict the future, but we can certainly give it a good enough try. There's so much to know about how open source is made and why we make it, but if there's only one thing you take away from this today, make it this. To plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow or if you're me, to plant in a community garden is to believe in ourselves. So we have about like 15 minutes for Q&A. If we can get the lights up in the house a little bit so that I can see folks, unless you're the one who's seeing folks for me. Uh, I'm gonna look, we have a microphone out there. We have microphones and people that are going to take microphones, microphones to and you. people. A real community. <laughs> we have one there. 
We're asking other people to come to you because it's a little dark and we don't want you to trip on the stairs. Hello, I'm Kimberly Hello, and Kimberly. I'm from Newfold Digital. Happy International Women's Day to you. Thank you. So the community of volunteers is very impressive and I know that there's five for the future and Newfold with Bluehost and Yoast um, funds certain people in the community. Mm -hmm. But what do you see as the broader opportunity for the volunteers in the community as how they can learn and grow and potentially go on to gain other opportunities, both paid work and others? Yes, this is one of my most favorite questions to answer, but it's a big answer. For folks who have not seen me talk before, all my answers are big. So, so on the one hand, I believe that you, if you are participating fully in the WordPress open source project, you can learn all of the 21st century skills required to be an incredibly employable person. So there's that already. Like if you're in the earliest parts of your career, participating just with full spirited uh, abandon in an open source project can really help you to get trained with like, active stuff that you can point to later. So there's that. But if you are contributing to WordPress or any open source project as a part of your ongoing career journey, we technically do have a jobs board that is live on jobs.wordpress.net. Anyone can tweet that out. Um, and that has a few different types of jobs that we have on it. Like we have the standard job categories like design, development, content, etc. But I think we also have a category for people who are currently contributing and want to be sponsored to continue to contribute, uh, and also companies that would like to sponsor someone to contribute and can't quite find them yet. And so that's a great resource. If you have uh, skill sets already and you're here to give an, get, get your hands on some stuff and learn from some of the best of the best that I see out here, that is an excellent opportunity to say, and now I would like to also be employed to do that full time or find a job in WordPress or whatever it is. Like kind of answer the question? Yes, excellent. I think I, we all kind of missed actually where you go to get all this information. That's on jobs.wordpress.net. But even more broadly. Wordpress.org. Make.wordpress.org. Make.wordpress.org. This is a quiz that I didn't understand the genesis of. Make.wordpress.org is how you can find the community. WordPress.org is how you can find WordPress. Jobs.wordpress.net is how you can find jobs. I mean jobs in Word. You can post jobs in WordPress. Okay, questions? None questions. No, oh, I wait, see way a hand. I see all the way up you. there again. We, we yeah, you all are going to have to really flag <laughs> me down. It's, I'm staring into an abyss. Hi, Josefa. Thank you for coming to WordCamp Asia. My name is Ahmed, one of the organizers, yes. also one of the team reps for Polyglots. My question is with your presentation and the message that you are sending out for the masses coming outside the walled garden, yes. the open one, how does no-code contributors like myself fit in this scenario? Into this, uh, how, how do no-code contributors fit into contribution or helping people to know that like open source is great? Both. Both. Okay. Okay. So there are a number of teams that you can contribute to without having any code knowledge at all. There's obviously the photos team. There's uh, the training team, depending on what you're trying to train folks to do. Uh, I believe that the polyglots team doesn't require a lot of code knowledge. You have to do some like basic setup of stuff, but also the team that's working on tooling for that is, is trying to make that as low barrier and entry point as possible. Others, so community, yep, I can't believe I forgot it. Thank you whoever whispered it. Community is obviously one, they're a great one. That's one of my favorite ones. Uh, there are uh, like 108 countries or something that have organizers that just organize events to get WordPressers together. Because one thing I've learned in my nearly 10 years of doing this is that like WordPressers love to hang out together and figure out the problems together. It's the best thing. Um, there was a second thing I was supposed to answer and I have forgotten it. No, I didn't. Was that it? That was it. Great. Other questions? You mentioned embrace the similarities, but talk about 
and highlight the differences? Yes. So things like uh, data freedom, what does that sound like? How, do, how, how can we encapsulate those into small talking points for folks outside of traditional open source and maybe in proprietary platforms? Well, I mean, I'm going to come closer to you since you're on this stage with me. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, there's the obvious part of like, no matter where you are deciding to get online, some of the work has to be done no matter what. And you might as well do the work in a place where you own it. And that's really the, the that's the sound bite, right? So that's the sound bite. Like, you're going to have to do the work regardless, do the work in a place where you own it, where you're not going to be at the whim of algorithms that do not care who you are. They just care how many eyeballs are on their stuff, and your stuff has become their stuff, right? And so, like, it's a little bit data owner ownership. The data liberation project that's going on is going to help p folks kind of get into and out of walled gardens. If you have not seen that, I believe it's wordpress.org slash data dash liberation, um, and it is working to get folks the opportunity to get out of proprietary systems and into WordPress, or in some cases out of a specific WordPress host and into a new WordPress host, if that's what they need to be able to do. Yeah. That's what I was hoping you'd mention. Oh. <laughs> I'm winning this quiz. Anyone else? Is it possible for some community gardens to accidentally become walled gardens? I, you're whispering, what? Oh, I just thought I had a mic in front of me, I could hear. <laughs> Is it possible for some community gardens to accidentally become walled gardens? And oh gosh. Are there ways to prevent that? Um, I mean, what an interesting question. I mean, it must be. Everything, everything is, is, can change, right? Anything can change. I wouldn't know how you would change it. I'm kind one. of thinking along the lines of like SaaS products because GPL allows Wait. you to incorporate all your code, open source code, but you okay. don't necessarily have to give back to the project. Right. But also Thoughts. like GPL has a specific viral nature to it, which means that it has to then also all be GPL, which means it now is open source also. Perfect. <laughs> It is a quiz. We were joking. It's now the Joseph a quiz show. <laughs> All my notes say quiz, 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 quiz. <laughs> quiz, quiz, quiz. Oh, any questions that are not quiz questions from Robert Jacoby, our excellent MC? Okay. All right. I'm going to tell you all a terrible joke, and then we'll wrap it up. All right. I heard a yes for my terrible joke, so here it comes. It's the only joke I know. Where does a Triceratops sit? On its Triceratops. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. That is the end of my talk, and I'm so glad to be here with you. And thank you for kicking off the next 20 years of WordPress. Oh, I'll do my best. <laughs> I actually am not done talking because now I'm your wrap-up person. So here's this. Folks, you made it through the first day of WordCamp. If it's your first one, congratulations. If it's your millionth one, thank you also. Round of applause for yourselves. Don't forget to come back tomorrow because tomorrow at the end of the day, we have our project co-founder, Matt Mullenweg, who will be here to answer live questions from the audience, but also a whole series of excellent presenters that will be here leading all the way up to that. Not to mention that you will still have excellent food, excellent opportunities in the sponsor area, and then um, some general networking, getting to know all of the other folks in WordPress. Thank you so much. Go out there tonight and have fun, but don't have too much fun because we start tomorrow at 9. <laughs>